Okay, thank you uh, <coughs> for the invitation to speak at this, uh, this conference. Um, okay, um, I uh, will speak uh, about the subject that you can see, uh, which is a subject in pure mathematics. Uh, it's, a, it's a part of, um, of a subject, uh, it's, it's a part of a project uh, uh, which was financed by uh, ESIT, uh, which was called, uh, or is called still, non-commutative and geometric methods in functional analysis. So uh, the <coughs> porter de projet uh, is uh, Uwe Franz, who cannot be here today because uh, he's just taken by his obligations uh, uh, cons uh, related to the project, uh, he, he's right now at a conference which is dedicated, in fact, to, uh, to the subject uh, of, of the project, uh, to which I could not participate for personal reasons. So I'm, I'm, I'm here and um, I will give you first an uh, overview of, of our project. So uh, there were four main subjects in, uh, in this project, uh, first of them, first of all, then was topological quantum groups and their operator algebras, second, quantum probability theory, third, non-commutative LP spaces and quantum harmonic analysis, and the fourth subject is coarse embeddings of Banach spaces. So if Uwe was here, he would probably be telling you uh, some more details about, uh, about the progress they made <coughs> uh, in, uh, in the first two subjects. And since I'm here, I will tell you about the fourth subject because this is where I'm most knowledgeable in. So um, let me still re uh, return, go back to, to our uh, project. So uh, this project has implied 10 enseignants chercheurs, uh, which means uh, four professors and uh, six assistant professors. Uh, there have been 13 PhD students uh, uh, formed uh, during the time uh, of the project uh, by, the, by the team of functional analysis in Besançon. Uh, five of them have already defended, and the remaining are still in process. We've had one postdoc who was financed by, by this project, and we, of course, invited plenty of guests. Uh, not important, the number. Uh, we have organized several uh, one-day workshops, and one week-long school that was last year on, on multipliers in harmonic analysis, so it would be the third subject that you see uh, up there. And right now, uh, there is a multi-subject international conference uh, going on at CIRM in Lumine. Where there is a conference center for mathematics. So it, it started just this morning. Uh, well, the, the planning is so such because of, of course, the COVID uh, pandemic, because uh, this conference should have taken place in spring already, but it was postponed. And right now it is taking place in a hybrid way. So in fact, you can even watch the uh, talks uh, over internet as some of the main, main, main talks are uh, only uh, trans uh, transmitted by internet because the people are not even there. But some people are there, Uwe is there. Okay, now to the mathematics. So I will be speaking about uh, course embedding of Banach spaces. So I should explain what is a Banach space. So I would give you a crash course into Banach space geometry. <clears throat> so first we have to start with vector spaces. Uh, and maybe you remember from, from school that a vector space is, is a collection of vectors which uh, you can sum together. So vector is a, an arrow somehow, and you can have another arrow, and, and you can define operation of vector sum, so you complete the parallelogram, and there is, there is the sum u plus, u plus v of vectors u and v. Uh, there is another thing that you can do with vectors. You can multiply them by uh, scalars, well, so-called scalars. That means you can multiply them by numbers. <clears throat> so if you have a vector u, you can pick a number. Let's say here it's 2 and a half, and you can make 2 and a half times u. So here is the multiplied vector. Uh, what you also would like to do is somehow measure the size of a vector. So one way to proceed is to declare a set of size one vectors. That would be a circle at this picture, for example. And, and then if you have some other vector which is not in this set, well, you just look at the multiple of this vector which, which, which intersects your set of size one vectors. And then, well, here at this example, u is here, 
the vector, the multiple is two times square root of two uh, <coughs> of, of some size one vector. And so the size, which will be denoted by these double bars from each side uh, of, of the vector u is, is this multiple times the size of vector v, but the size of vector v was one. So the size is actually just the multiple. This is exactly what you want, what you expect from a size that it should behave in this multiplicative way. So not to say size all the time, uh, this quantity is called a norm of a vector. And I will, I will use the word norm. Okay, now the norm is not completely exact way to put it. It's a norm because you can choose plenty of different sets of size one vectors and each choice give you a different notion of norm. So you can, you can choose, uh, well, this would be the, 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 the vectors of size one for so-called Euclidean norm here for a different choice, here for a different choice. And it will always give you a good uh, notion of size of a vector. Now you would also like to measure distance between two vectors because for the moment we only define the size of a vector, but uh, you would like to say what is the distance between vector v and u and it will be defined as the size or the norm of the vector v minus u. Okay, so here you have a picture, you probably remember it from the school. Again, you have vector u, v, this is a vector v minus u, but it is, well, we like to translate it here. So, and, and its size, well, again, you, you would have to complete the picture with, with, with finding the right multiple uh, on the size one vectors. So anyway, if you follow this procedure and if you choose wisely your size one vectors, you will always have this inequality satisfied, which is called triangle inequality, which means that the, that the size of V minus U is always, well, the distance between V minus U is always less than the size of U plus the size of V. So this is something that we actually require. And so if you have this, you have a vector space. That, that's the set of vectors plus the algebraic operation. You have the norm. This is the way to measure the distance. And you have completeness, which I will not go into details. Basically, completeness means that you can, you can zoom on your space wherever you want, and when you zoom infinitely many times, at the end, you will find something. It will not be just empty space. There will be something. So, so these three properties define a Banach space. Well, this was a genius of Banach in the beginning of 20th century who came up, well, of course, things like this existed, but he, 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 he focused uh, on, on study of such spaces and uh, created a school around him uh, to study such spaces. Now, as I told you, you can, you can define a norm on a given set of vectors in infinitely many ways. But not only this, you can, my pictures were in two dimensions, but you can do this in any dimension. You can do it in three dimensions, four dimensions. You can do it in infinitely many dimensions. So for example, sets of functions which have infinitely many values would form a vector space, norm space, and Banach space if you, if you take care of everything. So you have plenty of Banach spaces, and here I, I, I mentioned some of them. Some of them are purely theoretical interests, such as James spaces, for example, but you probably know LP spaces, capital LP spaces, little LP spaces. Uh, some people might know Hardy spaces, which are very useful in number theory, Sobolev spaces in, in partial differential equations, um, Orlich spaces, well, of, of, of mixed utility, but definitely of theoretical interest, and so on and so on. That I didn't even list all of them. So one of the goals of the theory of Banach spaces is to classify them. And when you have a collection of objects, you can classify them according to uh, some obvious, uh, obvious uh, properties they have, like, well, here, according to size or color, but this might not be always very useful or very deep classification. Sometimes you want to know, I don't know, here you could, you could be interested in chemical composition or in the age of, of the shells. And this is not 
clearly visible. So you have to uh, go deeper. You have to know something about uh, the things that you want to classify. And uh, sometimes, of course, the obvious uh, features of your objects can give you hints about, about the less obvious features. So here, I don't know, uh, probably, uh, I don't know, if the, if the chemical composition, if, to, if the colors are not the same, maybe the chemical composition cannot be the same and so on. So for Banach spaces, we can, have, uh, we can ask the following classification questions. Well, we can ask, are two given Banach spaces the same? And uh, that would mean that we ask for a function which would pair all the vectors, so it means bijective, bijective, linear, that means that it was, would conserve the operations of sum and uh, scalar product, I mean, multiplication by scalar, and it would be even isometric, that means it would conserve distances between vectors. And you have some striking examples, which some of you probably know, uh, like for example, the, the space of integrable functions is isometrically the same as, as the <coughs> space of square summable sequences, and this is an old result of Parseval, even though he would not put it in the modern language of Banach spaces. Uh, okay, so next question that you can ask, if, if, if the two vector spaces are the same, and the distance is match up to a constant factor, so here the only thing that changes is this equality becomes double inequality, where you control the distance between the target vectors by some constant times distance of the original vectors and constant, another constant times the original vectors. And this is so-called isomorphic classification of Banach spaces. And this is a huge subject. This is what was initiated by Banach himself. It's still an uh, ongoing effort. It's, it's not at all easy, but it has a 100-year-old history. And and uh, so there are some more questions which are being uh, investigated nowadays. But, uh, just to give you an example, again, for people who come pe perhaps from the background of applied mathematics or partial differential equations, uh, uh, an example of which doesn't fit into the previous category is that the Sobolev space is always isomorphic to uh, LP space. <coughs> Another, another possible question that you can ask is, are the two sets of vectors the same and the distances match up to a constant factor? So that means that we erase the linearity of the mapping here that exists. I mean, I don't say the vector spaces are the same. The, the, the operation of the sum and so, uh, multiplication by scalar does not get conserved. So basically the mapping here is not linear anymore, but you still have the double inequality between the distances. And examples of, of, of Banach spaces, of couples of Banach spaces which are here and not in the previous setting, so you cannot find any linear isomorphism between, uh, are only non-separables. That means they are relatively large, and uh, the first of them were given by Aaron Lindenstrauss, then Gottfroh and Kalton, so that would be in the 70s, late 70s, Gottfroh and Kalton in, in 2000 something, uh, invented a machinery uh, which can give you plenty of examples and in fact uh, within, the, uh, within this project we, we have given some more examples uh, of the same kind but this is not exactly what I want to uh, speak about uh, today. Uh, so we have some more classification questions and this could be instead of asking whether the two sets are exactly the same whether there is a bijection between we can ask if one Banach space is part of another. Yes. One minute. Only one minute, okay. <laughs> yes. So, okay. so <clears throat> the, you would have the same inequality. You would, you would have um, here uh, that, that you have an injective map uh, and so on. Then you, you can Okay, now, okay, let me get to the real questions today. <laughs> and this is when one Banach space is mapped into the other one, maybe not in an injective way, definitely not linearly, and you have this double inequality, which is true only for large distances, so starting from a certain threshold. 
And you have some examples of this which exist. And, and then again, you can have even weaker way of comparing Banach spaces where instead of having multiplicative bounds, you have just any bounds where you want this function to be finite and this function to go infinity uh, at infinity. Okay, so this would be called coarse classification of Banach spaces. This would be called coarse Lipschitz classification of Banach spaces. Okay, so I will just go to the main point, which is study coarse and coarse Lipschitz copies of certain infinite graphs in Banach spaces. Now, what does it mean infinite graph? Well, he, here we have an example. You can, you can take the family of all k element subsets of natural numbers. Here I just shown several, one, five, seven, two, six, eight, and you connect them into a graph if they interlace. That would mean that, that here one, you can interlace, for example, these two, this is nicely seen. You have one, then two, then you have five, then you have six, then you have seven, then you have eight. So this is what is meant by interlacing. Here you can do similarly. And um, for example, these two points, these two balls do not interlace. And this is an infinite graph. And now you can define a distance on such a graph, which would just measure the, the length of the shortest path. So the distance from here to here is one, the distance from here to here is two, because you have to cross two edges on the graph. And I think if I only have one minute, or not even that, I will skip uh, these details. Uh, so, of course, th there is already some, some theorems, but, but playing with this kind of ideas, we, we could uh, add some, some knowledge to the classification of Banach spaces. Um, and, for example, one of the, one of the theorems which, which could serve, we, we have some geometric condition on our Banach space, uh, which implies certain uh, condition uh, concerning the embeddability of such an uh, infinite graph, coarse embeddability or coarse Lipschitz embeddability. And this would, this would allow us to classify the, the family of James spaces, which is indexed by, by positive real numbers larger than one. And in fact, similar results uh, can be done if you choose a different graph. So for example, humming graphs have been, have been studied in, in this project too. And uh, basically, this is it.